Hi, I am Rachel Riley, and thank you for joining us on National Numeracy Day. I am here with fellow National Numeracy Ambassadors Katya Jones from Strictly Come Dancing and Morning Life's financial guru Iona Bain. And we're here to talk about women and girls in maths and numeracy. Yay! So let's get started. Yay! I like the positivity. Yeah. Well, look at us coming from completely different backgrounds, right, and talking about numbers. Yeah. I think it's quite empowering. I think it's brilliant because obviously everyone uses numbers in their daily life and everyone has to do it at school. So tell me both of you, what was your experience with maths and numbers growing up and then going on into the workplace maybe? Um, my experience wasn't particularly good because I've always struggled with numbers and I always thought it was because I was stupid in some way or I wasn't trying hard enough. And then when I got to high school, I started um, having lessons with a really great teacher yeah. who really put us in a very calm, focused environment. I realised that actually I could get better with numbers, but that I needed a bit more help. So that's when I got um, uh, diagnosed with dyscalculia and I realised this wasn't my fault. This was just something about my brain that couldn't quite connect with numbers. So did you have to think of a new way to solve problems or what was that? key thing that helped you? I think the key thing for me was just understanding that it didn't mean that I couldn't get more comfortable and confident with numbers. It, you know, I wasn't going to go off and do a maths PhD anytime soon or, you know, go on countdown doing the numbers, <laughs> but I could get to a better place with it. So just taking my time, realising I could use calculators and realising that there were some basic formula, you know, um, percentages, there were some basic things that I could do to just get much more comfortable and confident with maths. So I feel much better able to deal with maths on a day-to-day -day basis now and that is just a complete turnaround from what it used to be. And so that's why I love being involved with this because my message is if I can do it, anyone can. And it gives you get a whoop for National Numeracy Day. I mean, yes, that's a, exactly. That that's how much I like it. maths now. <laughs> how about you, Katya? Mine was quite positive mm. and, you know, I can't say I've got credentials or I'm nowhere near probably your standard in maths, but um, I'm here representing sort of people who face maths on every day, in their everyday life and doing their jobs and different hobbies and um, I luckily my parents were very positive about yeah. maths and they fostered that really positive mentality in my life and I was very curious about it because it gave me structure I quite like logic and a method so I felt like the basics even of maths gave mm -hmm. me that opportunity you know to find logic and method and solve problems yes. um, in everyday life um, and I luckily again wasn't scared of them yeah. mm -hmm. I found them very playful and it's like a game and um, I wasn't afraid to go wrong and I think uh -huh. these are the things that are really important for anybody and especially on National Numeracy Day like my message would be don't be afraid yeah. to go wrong yeah. just like don't be afraid to ask for help right yeah. we all get things wrong Absolutely. when we learn to dance or I even get still yeah I got a few things wrong when I was learning to dance. <laughs> we all know what it yeah. feels like yeah. but it doesn't matter that you can't try again yeah. you yeah. can you've got chance after chance after chance to give yourself an opportunity to give it a go again and um, I that's what I love about maths it gives me that structure and confidence to go into everyday life, yeah. you know, with this positive mentality. And I like that your parents just bred that into you as well. I think my experience was from a young age, I was, I was good at maths and I got this prize when I was about five. And that was when that told me, oh, you're actually good at this before yes. I didn't know. It was a positive reinforcement. It was positive reinforcement. And because I got that praise for what was actually, for me, little effort, yeah. I wanted to do more of it. And the more I did, the better I got. And it was a positive cycle. But then, you know, in my role um, as a numeracy ambassador and, and going into schools and talking to kids about maths, you can see how the opposite would be really, really negative. And some kids, if they're told at a really young age, maths isn't for you or you don't have a maths brain this fictional maths brain yes and then you can switch off from it yeah. and you believe that and I think one of the key things we're talking about women and girls is that women are, are more likely to be influenced by external sources mm. than boys yeah. are so yeah. if you're told at a young age by potentially a female teacher or, or your mum maybe um, 
you, you know, it's just not for you. Like, yeah. don't worry, you've got the languages, you can do that. It's almost saying it's okay not to be good at maths. And it's something that's immutable that you can't change. And what I like about you is that you said it's playful and you can change how well you're doing and, and things that you don't understand to start yeah. with. You, yeah. you can get there. I completely agree about those early experiences because my first memory of doing maths was I was sat in a classroom and we were all supposed to do our times tables and fill them out in front of us. And w when we completed them, we could go out side and play so I just remember everybody else in the class you know getting through them going up to the front showing them to teacher teacher saying yeah that's right letting the kids go out and play and I was the only one left in the classroom because I hadn't got through them all because for me it just put me under that pressure that I couldn't handle at that time and having that memory then made me feel more scared of maths than I think I needed to feel and I, I completely agree with this idea that if you have that negative experience early on, it then just becomes a negative cycle that keeps perpetuating itself. So that's why when you're young, it's so important to, to not say, I am not a mass person or I'm not a numbers person. It doesn't mean that you can't acknowledge that it may not be as, as strong an area for you as other areas, but it doesn't mean that that, that has to be a no-go subject yeah. in your life. Well, I definitely hear... I can't dance from people, or yeah. I've got two left feet, as much as people say, yeah. I can't do maths, yeah. I don't have maths brain. Yeah. And um, I can definitely say with confidence that it's just another skill, like we learned to you drive a like car. My husband. <laughs> but it, you can learn to do anything. It might not be to the degree or to the level that other people can, yeah. but in your own little uh, world, you give yourself a little go goal, you can definitely achieve that. Yeah. You might need a bit more time. I think that's the key, isn't it? Time. Mm -hmm. Go at your own pace. I feel like at school they give us that time frame that you have to complete it by a certain yeah. amount you have to do as fast as other people yeah. no everybody learns a different pace and yeah. it's yeah. another skill that we can pick up or yeah. get better improve yeah. On. Yeah. and that that time thing really struck a mm. struck, struck a chord with me because there's kind of people think you know you have to be einstein and if you're not yeah. einstein you you shouldn't say that you're good at maths whereas yeah. you don't need to know to, to know every word in the english language yeah. to say you can confidently speak English exactly. and there's a kind of myth that Einstein was 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 behind and, and slow at school, um, which kind of gets mangled over the years. It is important to to you know reiterate what you said. You just go at your own yeah. pace, and s speed doesn't mean anything, does it? But also speaking of uh, you know people that we know, we hear about. Einstein, Newton, right? Yeah. But do we hear much about female mathematicians? Mm. I would I personally wouldn't be able to name one for no, you. You no, probably I wouldn't. But and where does that come from? And I Absolutely. guess that fosters that mentality in us as people, well. I mean, Ada Lovelace, if you want a mathemati female mathematician, yeah. she was Lord Byron's daughter and she was kind of the, 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 the mother of, of computer programming. So she's mm. a, a fantastic role model. But you, like you say, if you don't see people that you can relate to, um, and it's not necessarily, you know, people like Einstein, mm, it, it, yeah. it's people working as engineers, mm. um, it's, it's women, you know, space scientists. Until you can actually see people you can relate to, you can't necessarily imagine yourself going and doing those roles. And I think that's one of the reasons that there's a, a, a gender gap mm -hmm. yeah. in terms of careers in, in STEM. Yeah, well, that's one reason why I'm so passionate about speaking about money on TV and radio and in any public forum that I can find, because um, I think money, like maths, can seem like this big, scary, overwhelming subject for lots of people. But I have to say, particularly women, I think there's a really interesting stat around 35% of young women aged between 18 and 21 just do not feel comfortable making everyday financial decisions and that breaks my heart because this is I mean money is a fact of life um, it's something that we all have to learn to deal with um, and it's far better that we accept that and kind of try to get much more comfortable with it mm. even if we didn't have a particularly great experience at school which frankly is is true for most people I, I mean the key words you know you're talking about confidence yeah I think so much about this and about what National Numeracy um, Day and the organisation is about is about improving number confidence. Yeah. It's about saying Attitude. you can't do it yet. Yes. Um, and as I said before, you know, women we're more susceptible to opinions put on us, so mm. society's views. Mm. So there's been some really interesting experiments that I love to cite over the years, <laughs> where they gave men and women a, a math test and they did roughly, you know, the same. And then they gave a different set of people the same test, but they asked them to tick a box to say whether they were men or women before they did it. And the women performed 
less well. Oh my goodness. Because it's implanted in our minds. We're told yeah. over so many years that we're not creative mm -hmm. and you see mm. these role models, these male role models. What would you say do you think is, is the key to, to, to getting rid of that, breaking that and, and showing that girls are as good and changing our attitudes towards it? Well, um, I mean, obviously we've spoken about the need to have role models, but you know, you can be your own role model and you can, um, you know, decide that, you know, what experiences you had in the past, they belong to the past. They don't have to define your future. Mm -hmm. They don't have to set the tone for your relationship with money or maths for the rest of your life. And for me, you know, as somebody who perhaps grew up with a lot of the, the kind of you know, um, ideas about myself that a lot of women grow up with, the, the fact that I'm better with language and communication and relationships. Mm -hmm. Then getting into my 20s and deciding that I really wanted to get to grips with money and learn about it for myself. And accepting I was going to make a lot of mistakes, like you said, Katia, you know, that I was not going to be perfect and that I was going to keep learning. Um, and also, I mean, it's one reason why I don't necessarily like to call myself an expert, mm -hmm. because my feeling is that I'm no more expert than anyone else. What I have is the motivation and, and that kind of extra spark to want to go out and get the answers to questions. And we can get those answers now. I mean, that's the beauty. We do have, you know, calculators in our pockets. Yeah. We do have the ability to go online and get the answers. We can find out how how do you calculate a percentage? If you don't know that yourself, you can go out and find that information. So it's not inaccessible, it's not locked up in a cabinet somewhere, it's there for you to find. And I think for me personally, you know, I could be sitting here right now feeling quite, you know, maybe self-conscious mm -hmm. around knowledgeable women like you, but it's, it's not a measure of intelligence. Mm -hmm. I think we should remember that. Yeah. And the levels of knowledge could be different but staying curious and mm -hmm. that uh, will to learn and yeah. get better, I think that's what's important, just that first little step. And like you said, the answers are available, especially on National Numeracy website, well, you know, yeah. you know mm -hmm. that's where you can go and find the answers and not feel ashamed of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, male or female, we live equal lives and face equal problems, uh, whether it's bringing up children, going yeah. shopping, buying properties, yeah and we need the same amount of knowledge. So just go and do it at your own pace. Take that little step. Yeah. Even if you don't tell anybody, fine. You can do it by yourself at your own time. And it, for me personally, that's what gives me confidence, mm -hmm. just be out there, you know? Yeah, I like that because, you know, these days I feel like we have to make quite a big song and dance about things, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm embarking on this new exercise yeah. regime, I'm embarking on this new <laughs> diet, I'm embarking on this, that and the other, I'm going to change my life. But actually, with, with something like the National Numeracy Challenge, it's not something that has to take up a lot of time. It's yep. not something that... It takes 10 minutes. Exactly, it takes 10 minutes and it's just that little tiny first step towards you getting more confident and you just doing something that's going to have knock-on effects for the whole of your life and particularly for your finances because you want to feel like when you're dealing with any kind of financial company or anyone who's, you know, um, trying to get you to part with your cash, that you're the one that's in charge, that you're the one that knows how things are working and that you are capable of making those decisions. And the confidence that that gives you is incredible. Yeah, absolutely. I think you both touched on it as well, that we're talking about everyday maths and mm -hmm. we're talking about the type of maths that you, get, you would use in your job, um, that you would use to do your household budget, that you used to save you money in the supermarket that's relevant to everybody. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and find those hacks as well that work for you. For me, you know, the way that I've got to grips with my finances is by making them much more visual, because that's definitely how my brain works. And so, you know, if I can figure out percentages, I can then put them in a pie chart. Yeah. And then by doing that, I can pizza. just see. Yeah, pizza. in a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. exactly. How do you want to call it? Exactly. And if you can tie it into your love for pizza. Or <laughs> Always to relate it back to food, that's going to be my tip as well. And um, I think the good thing about the challenge, if anyone wants to try it as well, you can stop it, you can start it, and yeah. it tests a broad range of, of maths and numeracy skills so yeah. that you can see where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, go at it in your own pace, return to little bits and, 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 and pick it up as you go. Genuinely, that's how I found national numeracy. Yeah. I went, oh, let me just give this a go. And as you get better, you get more confident, yes. then you want to do more. Yes. And it's those tiny little positive steps yeah. that make all the difference. And, and one more thing I'd like to add is, I think we need to just change the PR mm. around mm -hmm. um, how yeah. we talk about yeah. math and numeracy in general, but also women in these fields. We just need to change our language. Um, so the psychology, you know, follows. Um, 
I think women, there's, there's, there's been studies, I love these little studies, Me too. Um, <laughs> where they, had, they, they were trying to look at why there weren't more women in senior management. Mm. And they, 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 they took a job description, showed it to some women, showed it to some men. And if the women didn't tick all of the boxes, they didn't go for the job. Whereas men are happy to put themselves out there with maybe 50% oh, of yeah. the attributes that they needed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think as women, we just need to recognize that mm -hmm. this is something that we do mm -hmm. so that we can go outside our comfort zone and, and yeah. try something new because otherwise these people that don't know what they're doing no, we'll that do. present <laughs> they know what they're doing yeah. make us feel yeah, like we're not as good whereas we are yeah, yeah. isn't it sad that some uh, women won't apply for certain jobs or wouldn't even consider it right because mm. yeah they have that low confidence in numbers yeah. yeah i mean some of the stats here i think it says um 33 percent of women would be put off applying for a job if it said you had to be good at using numbers and data whereas just 20 percent mm. of men would um, uh, you know, lower attainment and number confidence has greater impact in careers and earning mm -hmm. um, career choices and even things like health outcomes. Mm -hmm. Physical and mental health well-being can be linked to, to, to confident numeracy skills. So yeah. there's so many reasons to get out there and, and give the National Numeracy Challenge Definitely. a go today. Absolutely. Um, remember that it's not a competition. You know, I think maybe at school when we do um, everything, <laughs> it can start to feel like a competition yeah. and that, you know, some people are better than us at these things and we're better than other people at other things and so on. But life is life is not a competition in the sense that, you know, obviously you, you need to get on and progress and do well. But with these things, it's about you. You, you. You're learning for your sake. You're learning to help yourself feel more confident. And what I love about the, the challenge is that it's just about your own progress. You know, you don't have to pay attention to what anyone else is doing. Well, I absolutely love chatting to you. Thank you so much for all your maths Thanks. confidence. I've not had to strain my face with anyone <laughs> saying, I don't like maths or I can't do it or I haven't got a maths brain. It's been an absolute joy. Um, so happy National Numeracy Day. Happy Yay. National Numeracy Day.